Okay, so we're going to finish problems number 15 through 20. So it says, if x is not equal to negative 2 and x is not equal to 3 over 2, what is the solution to this proportion? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to solve this proportion and we're going to hope that the answers are not negative 2 or 3 over 2. So the way we solve a proportion is we do the butterfly method or we cross multiply. So we cross multiply, we would do x times x plus 2 equals, and then we'd go ahead and do 5 times 2x minus 3. The reason why it's called butterfly method is because you can kind of see the butterfly coming through. Okay, guys, looks like a carrot, actually. <laughs> Anyways, so let's go ahead and we're going to distribute the x. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is plus 2x. Bring down the equal sign. Distribute the 5. 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. We're going to try to combine these because I see that there's an x squared and x and there's also a constant. I'm going to try to make it look like a trinomial. So the way I'm going to make this into a trinomial is by putting all of this onto this other side. So first I'm going to move the 10x by subtracting the 10x from both sides. And it's going to be x squared minus 8x is equal to minus 15. And I'm going to add 15 to both sides. And I'm going to be left with x squared minus 8x plus 15. All right. So the reason why I made it into a trinomial is because I can go ahead and I can factor that trinomial. And then I can solve each part of the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to factor this trinomial. And we've done a little bit of factoring in my other videos. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break it down into two binomials. x squared can be broken down x and x. Then I'm going to find two numbers that when you multiply them together, they equal 15. But when you add them together, they equal negative 8. So we're going to do um, negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. But negative 5 and negative 3, when you add them together, equals negative 8. So I'm going to do negative 5 and negative 3. So I'm going to set these both equal to 0. And I'm going to go ahead and solve. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So x is going to be equal to 5. And I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 3. So they said x is not supposed to be negative 2 or 3 over 2, which we didn't get that. We got the answer 3 or 5. So our answer is going to be a. So anytime you see two fractions set equal to one another, go ahead and you can do the butterfly method, cross multiply, and go ahead and factor that. And then you are able to find your solutions. And hopefully they won't be the solutions that they're not supposed to be. All right, you guys, you're doing so well. Let's go ahead and go to problem number 16. So they're talking about these two triangles, J, K, and L. So they're talking about J, K, and L, and P, Q, and R. And the reason I'm writing it like this is because if you look at these triangles, they're said to be congruent. Now, if you're taking notes on your piece of paper, just write what the definition of congruent means. Congruent triangles, they have same angles. So their angles, the corresponding angle will be the same measurement. And they also have the same lengths of their sides. So the corresponding lengths would also be the same. And that's how you know that two triangles are congruent. The sides will be the same measurement and the angles that are corresponding will also be the same measurements. But the reason why I wrote it out like this, JKL and PQR, is for you to be able to see that this triangle is a little bit different from this first triangle because it looks like it has been turned around a bit. So the reason why I write JKL and PQR is for me to see, okay, what angles are supposed to be the same and what sides are supposed to be the same. So it kind of just lines up. J is supposed to be the same as P, K is supposed to be the same as Q, L is supposed to be the same as R. Those are all individual angles. So that is how it's supposed to be. So this first one is supposed to be the same as this. So this angle J is supposed to be the same as angle P, and then just so forth and so on. But if you know this, then also the line JL should be the same as PR, or the line KL should be the same as QR. 
I'm literally just, if I use the second and third letter, then I have to use the second and third letter here. So that's the reason why I wrote these out so that I can see which sides and which angles are supposed to correspond. So I would recommend that you guys do that also on your tests. Now, they're just asking us if these triangles are congruent, meaning the corresponding angles are the same measurements and the corresponding sides are the same measurements, which one of these A, B, C, or D proves that J, K, and L and P, Q, and R are congruent? Well, the thing that you need to be able to see is that when you see this sign that says this R, that means angle R. When you see this symbol, that means congruent. And when you see this, it means equal. And when you see two letters just side by side, like PR, that is talking about a line. So this is a line, this is an angle, this is the congruent symbol for angles, this is the equal sign for lines. So again, the rule is you have to have the same measurements for the angle and the same lengths. So if you look through these choices, you have to see, you're going to have to see which one has congruent angles and equal lines. So this one has congruent angles and equal lines. So this possibly is the answer. This one is just showing that the lines are equal. They don't say anything about the angles being equal. So there's no way to prove that that's congruent triangles. Okay, this again is only talking about two sides being equal to one another. So we, just because two sides of a triangle are equal to each other, we don't know what the angles are worth, okay? And then these, these symbols are talking about the angles, angle K and Q and angle L and R. They're saying that they're congruent, that's beautiful, but they make no mention of whether they also have sides that are equal to one another. So this also cannot be the answer because it's only talking about the angles. We need to find an answer that's talking about angles and lines. So the only possible answer to this question is A. That's the only possible question. Something else that you should just know is that I'm going to go ahead and let me just erase some of this before it gets to, too distracting. Just one other thing that you just need to know is that these are talking about angle L and angle R. Angle L and angle R. So if you look at angle L, that corresponds with angle R. So that is correct. And then it's talking about the corresponding side, J and L. So it's talking about J, L, and it's talking about P, R. So it's very important that when you're talking about corresponding lines, you have to make sure that the angle that's congruent is attached to the line that's also congruent. So because they're talking about this angle R, it is attached to this line PR, so they're talking about the right line. And then in this case, they're talking about angle A, sorry, angle L. So as long as they're talking about an angle that's also attached to the line, the same line, then you know that they're referring to the right line and they are congruent. So I know this was a lot of information, but just take away this problem. All you need to know is that Congruent triangles, they have the same measurements for the angles and the same measurements for the lines. The only way you can prove that two triangles are congruent is if they show you that lines are equal and triangles are equal. You can't just have two pairs of triangle, two pairs of angles, two pairs of lines. You need to show that their angles are equal and the lines are equal. It's a very simple, easy problem. I just wanted to be able to explain it to you guys so you know for the future. All right.